Welcome back. This is Advokta. This is Murps. We're doing Mage, the good old tutorial class. Let's jump right into it. This Mage is Forged, has... the Forged in the Baron's card valuation stream, by the way. Yes, right. Because, you know, you're definitely watching it and expecting barbecue advice or something. Yeah, and this um, is like episode nine. So if you're watching yeah. this and not the other stuff, at least watch the first one. You should definitely watch him. Mage gets started with one card in the A tier, which you wanted to knock down lower, but you're a hater. So we're going to talk about Ruined Orb. Ruined Orb is a two mana arcane spell, deal two damage, discover a spell. You're going to notice that, oddly, I've been much higher on cards than Adwokta is for this expansion, which is weird for me because usually I'm the hater. But I'm a huge proponent of discovers of good cards later in the game or within the game. Getting a card in the draft versus you getting it in the game means you can tailor it uh, much, for, like, much more towards what you exactly need. If you listen to what I said before, I think in 2021, arena games are lost not uh, so much on these incremental things, but about you not having this one thing on a specific turn. And but for that, like if you had it, you would have been fine. You would have at least been really, really competitive or you would have actually won pretty easily. Whenever I analyze my games nowadays, I'm just like, it was just this one thing. Like this is one turn where I literally didn't have this damage. I didn't have this thing. I couldn't deal with that and I lost, and looking at my hand, I think I'm fine if I just had that. So, Ruined Orb, two mana, two damage, nothing to write home about. In fact, it's not fantastic. It's pretty but you get to dis But you get to discover a spell, and spells are, on average, better these days, although it's mage, so you know, it's, it's still a little bit iffy sometimes. Um, you get to discover it later on in the game to do what you need it to do, and, and that's why it's A. Now, it's not super high A. It is like low A. But I wanted this to be an A. Whether it's to send a message or just to trigger Adukta, I don't know. But I really like this card. Okay. So I, I think it's a B plus, but I'm I'm okay with an A. Murph's kind of raised a whole bunch of stuff that was like discover a spell. If you notice, it's gonna be a pattern. I love All it. The... Yeah. You, you'll see a theme. Like uh, this was me pushing uh, the scoundrel. And this is me mm -hmm. pushing Rune Orb. And it's a consistent thing where I, it's just me uh, looking at my previous arena games. And yes, Keck W, I have played some arena games recently, um, but I'm looking at my losses and it's really like an inflection of just like, okay, like it, it's not gradual. It's just this one stupid thing. And how do I prevent losses? I need to prevent this one stupid minion that stayed uh, on the board and I needed to remove it or, or this one or two turns in which I absolutely needed this AoE, but I didn't have it. Yeah, so um, the thing with Rune Orb, besides the, the normal Discover it spell things, which is that it's still random, you're going to get an AoE sometimes, you're not going to get an AoE sometimes, it does obviously give you more chances of getting it um, than some other card. But at this level, like, you know, we're talking about A tier cards, B plus tier cards, um, it's, it, y your cards are just doing a lot and uh, I mean, Rune Orb obviously does do a lot because discovering a spell is really powerful and dealing two damage is technically on curve, although these days it's not really on curve anymore, even if you don't count. Like if you had a card and then you added deal two damage onto it and then you raised it by two mana, that's bad. You've made the card significantly worse. So if you're using two mana to deal two damage, you're, you're falling behind, right? Because nowadays cards are fully on tempo and then they do something else. So here's a card that it may not look like it, but even if you attach it to another card, it is falling behind in the tempo game. So you are giving something up to be able to discover a spell. But yeah, discovering a spell is very, very powerful. And uh, it is also face damage. And you can use it to discover more face damage. There's like a lot of ways that this card can bail you out of a situation and or just like win the game. Um, yep. And that is, that is why it is so high. It, it's a rune orb you don't really know what's going to happen but it has good chances to be powerful one way or the other okay 
Uh, next, we have a B plus card, and it is Reckless Apprentice. Reckless Apprentice is a four mana three five battle cry. Fire your hero power at all enemies. It's kind of weird, but you know, fire like it's a weird phrasing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But firing hero power has applicability because of a card that we'll see. Also, you have Fallen Hero is in the core set now so firing your hero power means it's dealing two damage because at that point your hero power is two damage and you have this um, other card that is in this yeah, new set card. that literally mm -hmm. just forever is not even temporary just forever buffs your hero power yes so uh so reckless apprentice it deals at least one damage to everything including the enemy's face which is pretty nice it's a little bit understated um the only thing holding it back is <laughs> sadly for this effect, it's just like, oh, but it's not a Yeti. Um, and also, the applicability of that one damage, it's not always super relevant. Yeah, I mean, we're at B+. Plus. You're, you're, you're talking about, like, Rap Golems. You're talking about Fireball. These are premium cards, you know? So this is a premium card. It's You remember back in the day when it was Twilight Flamecaller, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two to do this. Well, now it's a 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, essentially, to do the, the same thing. So it's just, it's better. Um, the this is the card, right? Like I keep saying though, but four. Like if you're gonna say, oh, this is not an A, it's a B plus. You should tell me which card in B plus that we have that you would take over the A card. That's how you know it's in B plus. Otherwise, you're just dr moving a line, you know, between the same two cards, and it doesn't matter where you move it. Um, <coughs> Reckless Apprentice is the card that I would take over Rune Orb most of the time, not all the time. Yep. Um. And uh, it's because it's a good four drop too. Most of the time, you're gonna want to deal one damage to something, even when you play it on four. So even if you're just using it to deal with damage to one thing or whatever, right? They got a favorable trade. You clean it up, put a three five down. It it just it's very flexible and uh, has has that combo potential as well. Yeah, we we had this discussion uh, where we established I would take Ruined Orb over um, the Reckless Apprentice. Mm -hmm and Adulta will take you'll see it as well like i want to fish for that answer mm -hmm. while Adulta wants the more consistent thing yep it, it's a theme anyways we can move on to uh the c plus cards we have three of them so we're starting with arcane luminary yeah. remember c plus slightly better than yeti three mana four three elemental it's got the tag already a little bit better than just a normal card and it has uh, an effect. Cars that didn't start in your deck cost two less, but not less than one. You can generate some cards. Yeah. It could be applicable. Yeah, like, say, with a Rune Orb. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but between the effect and the elemental tag, it's C+, a little bit better. Next, we have Oasis Ally. Three mana secret. And it's a frost spell. When a friendly minion is attacked, summon a 3 6 water elemental. So it's a delayed water elemental. As to how much it, it is delayed, that depends. But it's a cheaper delayed water alley. Okay, so there are cards that trigger upon using frost spells. So if you have mm -hmm. that card and then you play an Oasis ally, then it's no longer a secret. Yeah. Or is Ice Barrier, I guess, is also a Frost. Uh, oh, sorry, no, Ice Barrier is not in the game anymore, is it? No, Ice Barrier is in the game. So, okay, so maybe it's still a secret. I see what they did. Okay, fair. Um, okay, so Oasis Ally is... I mean, usually you don't see... You almost never see Mage Secrets go above a Yeti. So this is, like, one of the best Mage Secrets. This is still not great, but um, getting a Water Elemental uh, for three mana is very good. And... It, People attack uh, minions a lot. And you uh, also fake out the opponent's hardcore because of the mirror entity, because of the counter spell. Like, the disruption effect of the secret is quite high because mages now have a everything covered, right? It's spell, it's play spell, play minion, attack face, attack board. That's your coverage now. That's, yep. that's quite wholesome. And you got to try everything. And you get punished pretty hard for, like, all these things if you don't do it right. Um, so the least punishing one is probably the Oasis ally. That's the one they're going to care about the least. But that also means you get your 3 mana water elemental quite frequently. Yep. 
this is the secret that I'm hoping you play against my hunter. Play this. Definitely play this. I will definitely trade. 100%. Next card is Rhyme Tongue. Uh, Rhyme Tongue is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with upside. It says, after you cast a Frost Spell, mm. summon a 1-1 one, one Elemental that freezes. That's not bad. A 1-1 one, one Elemental that freezes uh, does some work. Yep. It's it's very good actually if you could get one one elementals that freeze. It would be way higher than a C plus. But you have to cast a frost spell. And there's not a lot of frost spells. And most of the mage frost spells are bad. So Yeah. So this is a C plus. Um it's it's fine. Like once again, C plus is om- is almost just a tier of like, oh, vanilla th- uh, three drop that has a decent upside. Some of them have like bonkers upside, but in order to proc it, uh, you, you know, you're looking at a 1% chance. Uh, that's fine. All right, we're going to the C tier cards. This is uh, C tier. First, we start off with Wildfire. Wildfire is a fire spell. Two mana, increase the damage of your hero power by one permanently for the rest of the game. You're, you're paying something, but the difference between a one damage hero power and a two damage hero power is huge. It's double, actually. I did the math. Uh, and if you are able to prolong games, which mages are able to do decently well, uh, you can extract a lot of value from it. Yeah. Um, also, it turns your hero power into a hunter hero power, too. It's just flexible. Um, it's, its main problem is that it eats up a card, but there's pretty easy ways to kind of generate cards in, uh, in today's meta that you're not too worried about it. And for two mana... You're going to get your tempo back within a reasonable amount of time. So it's kind of like a, a reasonable card. Mm-hmm. Next, we have Refreshing Spring Water. This is a four mana spell. For four mana, you draw two cards, refresh two mana crystals for each spell drawn. It's I didn't fair. math this out. I just trusted you. I mapped it out. It's fair. Okay. That's why it's okay. a C, right? Yeah. 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 yeah that's where okay. we have Arcane Intellect, by the way. So it's uh, just, yeah, it's, it's fair. It's better than a Yeti, but not by enough to move it to a C plus. Yeti's at the very bottom of the C tier. Um, yeah, it's a little awkward, but it does the job. Okay. Next, we have a legendary Varden Dawn Grasp. This is a legendary minion, four mana, three, three, battle cry, freeze all enemy minions. If any are already frozen, deal four damage to them instead. It's a uh, Frost Nova on a stick. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a decent stick, but it's a Frost Nova on a stick. You could have stuff that's already frozen. You probably aren't going to, um, but it's fine. Like Frost Nova is not a good card, um, but this is average. Yep. Okay. Next we have. The D tier. We have two cards that are D+. plus. First, we begin with Flurry. This is the rank card. So this is like the lowest rank card that we've seen. Um, Flurry, uh, rank one is zero mana. Freeze a random enemy minion. Rank two, so on five mana, is freeze two random enemy minions. And rank three is three random enemy minions. Just doesn't do exactly enough. It's a cheaper Nova-ish sometimes but nova is not good and it's and random is good it's random like as well. that's what's killing it you, you, you want to like when, when it gets to three maybe you don't care that it's random but it's not just a zero mana freeze a minion until it gets upgraded like you're, you're running a risk of not freezing the one thing that you need frozen yep that's where it's at now for the very last card and probably my favorite card uh, the only even, card over eight mana in this set. The only card. It, it's it's a favorite. We have Mordresh Fire Eye. Ten mana, ten ten battle cry. If you've dealt ten damage with your hero power this game, deal ten damage to all enemies. So their face, all their minions. It, it's like just just a huge wave, right? Um, this counts for uh, Wildfire, Reckless Apprentice. Fallen Hero, all those things. 
this is a D plus. I'm going to tell you guys, I fought so hard for this to be a C. I, <laughs> I, I fought so hard, ridiculously so. It, I, I it, it ends up being like what percent you think this will trigger. Just based I on like, your, and, yeah. and Murphs came at me with like 35%. I'm like, that's bullshit. There's no way that of the percent times that you see this in your, like that you draw this, that it's going to trigger 35% of the time. If it would be 35% of the time, this is way better than a D plus, by the way. This is way better than a C. This would be like, I think a B plus or something. Um, well, I think it's 35% with a caveat that uh, I'm doing things that are detrimental. <laughs> Oh, like, okay. Are going to end up? Well, no, 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 not not to such a degree. You know, it's balanced. I, I'm not like throwing for this and only this, but like I'm gonna do some things well, that are, but like going to be a little bit detrimental. Yeah, yeah, but, but like I'm only not going once, to play, quote normally. But, but only once you have this card in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's what I assume yeah. too. Yeah. Once you have this oh, card in your yeah, hand, yeah. you should be like hero powering as much as possible. Because this effect right. is so big that it'll justify any amount of hero powering you do to try to get to it. Like, mm -hmm. unless it's actually going to cause you to, like, lose in the next turn or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but before you get it in your hand, I don't think you can just, like, hope to, you know, top deck it at some point and start being detrimental to your game plan. Um, it's just... I, I estimated it at around 10% chance that it would trigger, and this is around 14% chance is the score we gave it a D plus. So... I don't know if you if you believe in it more, and then we'll see, right? Once you, I mean, I guess it's a legendary card. We won't really see that much, but when you play with it, you'll see how you uh, how often you can actually pull it off. Um, also depends on the speed of the meta. The meta's fast, so a ten mana card, like all ten mana cards, you go face fast opponent in a fast meta is not going to do anything. It's going to be terrible. It's just stuck in your hand. And I think this meta is going to be uh, well. Okay, I think after they ban the watch post. This meta is going to be kind of schizophrenic, sometimes fast, sometimes slow, depending on who you face. Pretty diverse, right? Like, um, that was kind of how the last meta is. I think this one's going to be even more so. Um, and so you're going to, this, this deck, this card's just going to hurt you in, in those cases, as all 10 mana cards are, because no one else has 10 mana cards. You're like kind of alone in, in doing this. Um, on the other hand, if you get a Reckless Apprentice or if you get the, what is it called, Wildfire um, in your deck, this card is amazing. Like, if you could even somewhat reasonably trigger it at a high percent, like, this is, I mean, it's 10 mana, 10, 10, kill everything and pyroblast your opponent's face. Like, it's amazing. Yep. Once again, remember, uh, and temper your expectations. Don't be dreamers, okay? Don't, don't be dreamers, guys. Because I already see people dreaming, and they're like, whoa, wait, like, um, doesn't it work with Reckless Apprentice? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it work with Fallen Hero? Yes, it does. Like, of course it does. Now... Because uh, I think people are confused because they're like, well, if it works with that, well, yeah, because I'm going to have two of uh, two Bone <laughs> Heroes and two Reckless Apprentices in my deck. Like, wait, what's the issue here? <laughs> there's no offering bonus, guys. Remember, there's no offering bonus. So that Reckless Apprentice that you're like, well, yes, Murps, I'm going to draw both. I'm going to draft two Reckless mm, Apprentices. Get I'm going to draw bo both of them. I'm going to have played the Wildfire before then. And oh. I'm going to be able to play that. So every time I draw this, which is perfectly on turn 10, by the way, um, it's always going to proc. I, I don't see the problem with this. It's like, I, I don't understand how you're not seeing uh, the curve that I'm seeing. Um, there's no offering bonus. Your chances of getting the re uh, Reckless Apprentice is really small. It's not, it's not just like, not, oh, I'm going to get one It's not really one small, deck. but like, yeah, it's, it's okay. To, you pr it's also a rare card, Reckless Apprentice. You, yeah. You're probably going to get offered one on average, maybe. At best, like it's gonna be less than that, yeah. Maybe, yeah. But like you're like look, if you get offered the more dress fire eye and you already have two reckless apprentices in your deck, pick it. It's really yeah, good. Yeah. Pick it. We're we're average. rating the average. Right. Yep. Uh so this could be uh like an S tier card, like even in the yeah. draft, yeah. right? Like oh, yeah. you won't know in the draft if this is an you S tier know. card. You won't know. Uh, and uh, but I don't have to tell you because you guys are picking anyways, all right? Because I know all of you guys are those kind of players. Uh, I want to draft this as well, okay? I tried fighting for this to be a little bit higher, but even I know this is on average not a good slash great card. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's Mage. And I think if you were to sum summarize Mage, uh, Mage got a, a very good core set, like we talked about. It, it's cohesive. Um, they you know a lot of people are talking about it's like oh man they, they you know they lost polymorph right like oh that that's huge uh everyone lost something they never 
really needed polymorph and in fact on our old tiering list we you know polymorph wasn't like their best card yeah. by far um mages what they lost compared to what they kept slash got in comparison to other classes uh really good and if you if you look at it and just say well okay um they got a lot of like c tier cards that's fine these are c tier cards that really contribute and help what they're trying to do you know they got good three drops right in a meta that emphasizes threes um they have ways to prolong the game and then they have all this hero power stuff that that helps out uh so i think majors are, are good they're going to be fine like they're they're the solid fundamental class that uh that you know you, you kind of expect them to be you know dealing that damage putting stuff on board trying to prolong the game a little bit i think this set was not particularly good for mages. Um, it does have the rune orb and the uh, apprentice. And really, like you, when you remember classes that dominate, you just remember the one or two good cards they got. The other cards kind of don't matter as much. So mages do, do, do have that. But what's really going to make them dominate in this meta is, is not exactly rune orb or reckless apprentice. It's what cards they're getting back in the rotation. Like Conjurer's Calling is getting unnerfed. And and coming back, and that car will just that car will single handedly lift Mage up. Um, so I don't know that any of this stuff like it's all gonna help, but it's not the core that's gonna drive the Mage like dominance. The Mage dominance is gonna happen because unnerfed Conjurer's Calling is going to be in the arena. Also, five damage Flame Strike that you. Can oh, oh yeah, right. That's right. Five damage Flame Strike is a thing now um, that we literally have as an A plus card in core, which you normally don't see. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, a, that's a tippy top of the power scale, right? Like, above right. that are cards that should not exist. So that's a card that you really don't want to exist, but it's not going to totally ruin the game. Um, so yeah, like, I think Mage is going to be good, but these cards are just the support cards. These are the cards that you're going to draft, and they're going to be like, you know, like if you have a fire, uh, Firelands Portal now, you're like, ah, oh, good card. You're not like, oh, my deck is built on this, right? This is not like grand finale here. Um, that's what Rune Warb is. That's what Reckless Apprentice is. Good supporting cards that have, pack a lot of punch, but they're not the ones winning you the game necessarily. They're supporting the existing amazingness that is Mage. Okay, that is it. Um, that's it. That's it. Gonna give some shoutouts? Because we did it in the last one? I don't really want to but fine thank you <laughs> to i don't know the arena community ah yay uh on to the next video uh, okay shout out to everyone who's still playing arena out there really i feel like this is a good time to play arena because we're getting a lot of stuff even if it's not for us we're gonna get benefits out of it and especially the people who have started recently streaming, who have been streaming Arena all this time, or who have just persisted and kept, you know, competing over the leaderboards, even when the leaderboards were very spotty. Um, so thank you guys for keeping Arena alive. And we're, I feel like we're, we got past 2020, right? Like 2020, whatever else happened, I think there was, there was a, a, a bug or something um it was very bad for the arena overall in that they announced at the very beginning that they were going to do nothing with the arena for a whole year so <laughs> we're past that uh not that they have like concrete plans to do anything but they may start having some plans to do stuff so thank you guys for supporting the arena community and for being a part of it and uh you know um good, good times in the not super near future but in like the moderate future which is better than we were at the beginning of 2020 Right. Yep. See you guys. Next up is Pally. Pally, bye.